Hello, everyone. Welcome to this worship. We are into the third week of the season of Pentecost. For those who do not know me, I'm Reverend Louisa Yu, a minister of the Uniting Church and a chaplain of Wesley Mission, Queensland. Joining with me is Chaplain Mandy. We are both serving in Cinnamon Village and Dovetree Aged Care Homes in Cinnamon Park. During the service, there will be times when you can join in and respond, and the words will be printed in bold on the screen. As we gather in community and hope, I greet you in the name of God. The grace and peace and the, of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. We light the Christ candle as Christ's constant presence, the true light in this world, shines ever so brightly in our heart and every part of the world. Now let us come to God with our call to worship. God's kingdom springs to life without our realizing it. Praise our God of new life. Christ Jesus dies for life without our understanding it. Praise to Christ, our resurrection life. The Holy Spirit gives life without our observing it. Praise to the Holy Spirit, the life giver. Praise to our God, creator, Christ and conferrer of life. We worship our God of life in expectation of the coming of God's kingdom. Now let's worship God by singing together, Praise my soul, the King of heaven. Same forever, slow to 
Loving God, we thank you for your grace and favour. We adore you, for you are the King of heaven. We praise you for all that you have done in our lives. You're worthy of our praise. For the times when God's sowing in our lives has produced poor harvests, we confess our sin. When we seed of faith sown in our hearts has dwindled because we have failed to nourish and water it, Jesus, have mercy. Jesus, have mercy. When the seed of love sown in our minds has failed because the earth in which it is sown is poor and hard, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. When the seed of hope sown in our spirits has faltered because we have had too much competition for growth, Lord, Have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So again, the seeds of faith, hope and love in our very beings create the right conditions for their growth and bring to fruition an abundant harvest for your realm. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. In Christ, we are a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Through Christ, buried green of resurrection hope, the harvest is assured. Hear Christ's word of grace to us. Your sins are forgiven. And we respond. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Let's continue to worship God together by singing, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Retire, speak through 
We now turn to the scriptures. The gospel reading today is taken from the gospel of Mark, chapter 4. The parable of the growing seed. He also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces and grows. Grain, first the stalk and then the head, and then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. The parable of the mustard seed. Again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in it and have shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable that day. But when he was alone with his disciples, he explained everything. This is the living word of God. Thanks be to God. The theme for the reflection this week is faith as a form of quiet and resilient confidence. Let's pray before hearing the message. Thank you, Lord, for the word for us this week. May there be more of you and less of me in what I'm about to share. Speak to us through your Holy Spirit, for we are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last week, we look at the crazy love of God and how Jesus considers all who believe in God and live according to God's will as his brothers and sisters and mother. This week, I love these two many parables in Mark, short and sweet. They are small, but pack a punch. In this case, I would describe that punch as a kind of quiet and dynamic confidence before jumping into that fully, let me offer just a couple of words of background and information that might help. First, what is parable? In some ways, maybe it's easier to say what's not. Parables generally are not an encoded message for us to decipher. They are also not morality tales or fables. There is rarely a moral at the end for us to apply. Again, some parables certainly have moral and ethical implications, but they are not pearls of wisdom Jesus is dispensing like a self-help coach. Rather, parables are narrative contrasts. As I remember from Bible college, parable comes from two Greek words, para, beside, and ballerin, to throw. A parable is then throwing one thing beside another and to see what happens, like throwing a vision of God's kingdom beside the world as it is, like the world we now live in. Because they call into question accepted truths, they are almost always a bit subversive, challenging, and even goading us to consider other possibilities in light of God's promises. Second, let's look at the term kingdom of God, used in the two parables in our reading today. Some translate it as the reign and rule of God to highlight that more active dimension of the word. When we see the world as God does, and when we act towards each other as God would have us, we are living in God's rule. Which means we can experience and enact 
the kingdom here and now, as well as recognize that even our best efforts fall short of God's vision, and so recognize that God's activity and reign is not yet fully present among us. These two parables fall right into that interesting and even exciting now and not yet dimension of God's reign. I love gardening, but only doing my part of watering them uh, when it's hot and fertilize sometimes when I remember to, and leave it to God with the sunshine and enjoy the thrill and joy of seeing them grow. Lately, with the rain and in, win in the winter, I don't even need to do much with watering the plants. How good is that? As seeds grow, without too much of our effort, so also will, God's, will God bring about God's reign. It is not up to us. We can't make it happen. God is ultimately responsible for bringing God's rule and reign to bear. This is sheer promise. But this is also a little discomforting, especially when we realize that God's rule Concern and activities is on behalf of everyone, even those who look or believe or think differently than we do. We ourselves can bring God's sovereignty of redemptive love and grace, but neither can we control it or moderate it. And we definitely can't stop it. In this sense, it is more like the mustard plant that like an out-of-control garden plant, grows and spreads and can hardly be contained even if you, you're not sure you want it. In this light, this parable should rattle or shake us up a little, awakening us to the promise that God is on the move in our life, in our community, in the world, and that God will in time complete the work he has started. In the meantime, we are invited to live out our faith in God, wherever we are, acting in the confidence that God's promises are true. This means that when things are going well, we can take delight in being more aligned with God's will and ways. It also means that when life is hard, when we meet resistance, or when we fail and fall short, uh, far short of our hopes, that we can take refuge in the promise that God is still at work and has not given up on us and the world. We cannot measure the strength or validity of God's promises based on our efforts, but rather allow the promises of God who created light out of darkness and raised Jesus from the dead to give us a quiet and resilient confidence, to take joy when we see God's grace at work in our circumstances, and to be encouraged and empowered to keep faith when we don't see or even feel God is sorting out our problems. I would like to relate back to gardening. Seeds from a number of native Australian species require the presence of fire in order to germinate. Stone fruit trees require frost at just the right time in order that the harvest will be plentiful. There are events in our spiritual journeys which also set the seeds and trees of faith to life, although they may be difficult experiences at the time. Without our noticing it, they become experiences of growth, contributing to the production of a good harvest. Brothers and sisters, God is encouraging us to throw ourselves into the opportunities and challenges ahead of us with equal measures of delight and resolve. Keep at it, knowing that God is with us and for us, and give it our all, knowing that no work done in love is ever lost and that God, by his grace, in time will draw all things together for good. I thank God for these good words for us all today. 
Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, for your good faith. May God bless you all as you live life with that quiet and resilient confidence. Let us pray. God who plants and harvests, we offer our gifts to you that they might help to create the right conditions for the planting of the gospel in the lives of others and for the harvest of faith promised with the fulfillment of your kingdom. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Now let us respond by singing a beautiful hymn together. Great is thy faithfulness. with our prayer of intercession. When we respond to your word, we are planted in the family of God. We pray for those who live and grow in community with us. 
we bring to mind those that care and nurture us so that the fruit we produce is healthy and strong. We bring to mind those who observe when we are at risk and those who are with a heart of and those who with a heart of care and affection step in to protect and defend us we bring to mind those who work for a more just and kind world in which we can all flourish we bring to mind those who never give up the belief that all life is precious and that all have value and purpose. God, your loving spirit, plants seeds of justice and peace in our hearts and minds. We pray that we will be people of good faith, true caretakers and custodians of your story. Those who speak of goodness and act with compassion and so become agents of your love. Amen. Father God, thanks for hearing and answering our prayers. We continue to pray together as how Jesus has taught us to pray. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now let us sing our final hymn together to this great 8th century Irish tune, Be Thou My Vision.
Now let us go in peace to plant the seeds of faith, water the seedlings of hope, and wait for the promised harvest of life. May God who sows plant healthy seed in your hearts and minds. May Christ Jesus, who is the seed, bring new life into the soil of your lives. May the Holy Spirit, who brings growth, encourage you towards the promised harvest. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you today and forevermore. Amen.